Why is recorded in front of a live studio audience. I came loaded for bear, if you didn't I notice. love it. Um, so they, obviously there's the uh, writer's strike and the actor strike and the that is going on. Strike and, the, and the auto yes. strike, yes. Yes. And it, at least the auto strike hasn't, the, the writer strike's been going on for a hundred some days. Forever, yes. And SAG is not too far behind that correct um there is um a new auction i don't know if you saw this no okay so there is an auction designed to raise money for the crews of tv shows and films that are out of work because of the strike Mm -hmm. they're not union members but who are you going to grip for if right you know and so uh, a group of performers got together and put together an auction and it's a great list of stuff there are the signed scripts and that kind of thing Mm -hmm. but then there are also things like adam scott will in the la area he will take your dogs for a walk for an hour i did hear this part yes natasha leone will get on a zoom with you and you can do the new york times crossword puzzle together i mean that's exciting and then i've seen there's a few that I don't think are real, but I think we should get some money together to bid for just in case. Okay. Um, William DeMarest from uh, the grandfather from uh, My Three Sons. Mm-hmm. Uh, right now, bidding is at $2,025. Again, I, this might not be real, uh, but he will slut shame you over Zoom. Oh, that's exciting. Mm-hmm. That sounds very fun. This one's gone for a lot, but I think you'll see why. Taylor Swift will watch your funeral from a distance. So your friends and family are like, wait, do they know each other? That's pretty awesome. Um, this one, I think it must have just come out because um, it budding is only, it's a lot lower than I would think. Uh, Julianne Moore will yell at your pharmacist. Oh, that's very Magnolia. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, you can varnish a cabinet with David Lynch. Mm, that's a $10,000, that, which. I mean, I have sounds... some things that need varnishing. Right. Right now, this one's at half a million. Uh, Vin Diesel will point at you and say, you are family. Wow. Mm-hmm. Half a million dollars. Half a million dollars. Uh, the little I feel like I could I... get him to, if I met him, I feel like I could get him to do it for free. I think you'd have to slip him like a 20. Oh. I don't, I'm not even uh, a Vin Diesel fan, but I think I could. Okay, well, we'll see. Yeah. I could uh, find some sort of connection. That little rat from Ratatouille will tug at your hair and make you cook. <laughs> That's terrible. It's, uh, it's amazing. It's like become like the memes have just gotten better and better. Yes. And then there's two favorites that I've seen. One is you can get on a Zoom with Roger Waters. And for three hours, he will tell you all the things he hates about David Gilmore. I mean, <laughs> speaking pretty... of dinks of the year. Exactly. And then my favorite, um, Steve Zahn will help you remember what you've seen him in without getting impatient. Oh, I love and, Steve And what's Zahn. that worth? That's worth so much. I know, except we know what he's been in. I know, but I, I so thought it's not, like, But that's awesome. But he's been in so much. He has. He's he's impacted our lives in so many ways. Yes. Yes. He's one um, of the O'Neaters. Oh, you're right. Which they're just putting out, I don't know if you saw the vinyl edition of the soundtrack. Mm-hmm. So I showed the elder. Obviously, on Etsy, you can get everything, and somebody made a poster for the O'Neaters gig at the pizza place. That's awesome. And he was like, oh, my God, I want that. This is Why, with your hosts, Heidi Hedquist and Luke Poling. You, you said you get visitors. Yeah. yeah. How, many, how many visitors do you get? In a year, is it tens of visitors? Is it uh, probably tens, maybe more? Um, I I do often ask people to sign the visitors log. Oh my god, that's amazing! And, um, let's see. So, yeah, like here, you know, here's just you know, that's okay. Like it's dated. Yeah. Um, the. 524 to 719 that filled up a page wow okay so do you have a how did you hear about us uh section on that form no i don't i ask <laughs> i ask um date name okay. 
I tell people I'll never share this, so I'm not really sharing it here. Well, yeah. I will. Down, and I collect. And it's just fascinating what other people collect. Uh, like here, someone collects unicorns, debts, souls, anime figures, gnomes, magnets, clocks, <laughs> uh, huh. banjos, I think it says, books. Okay. Uh, whale things <laughs> whale things no, whale things that's what somebody <laughs> collects yeah patches dust memories mm -hmm. sure. bottle openers cats oh cats yeah <laughs> so yeah so yeah i guess you know i mean summer times may be a busier time but well um, vacations traveling sure eight nine ten eleven twelve well okay so i'll just count and the month of June, I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten visitors in June that signed the guest registry. Not everybody signs the guest registry, and sometimes Obviously. it's in, in groups of four or five, like a family or something. Sure, yeah. Um, so Heidi is here. Oh, hello, um, Heidi. Hi. She, sorry she for is the our, delay. She is the other Michigander of the group. Okay. Um, yes. I, I, there's a. There's a. Thing that's on my screen right in front of you and my mouse is on the other side so let me see if i can uh, go for it my mouse to this side so that i can control what i'm seeing now this is a an audio podcast i presume and not a video podcast it is if our guests are okay with it we uh will use the video on youtube but we completely defer to the guests yeah, I mean, I don't so care. I don't know if you have any outstanding warrants or anything like that. We're happy to just yeah. blur you. <laughs> yeah. So, how how does one get into the moist towelette game? Did your dad just collect regular towels, and you were just like, "I'll show you, Dad"? Uh, no, no. Uh, I just you know back in the nineties, I started collecting them, um, and then it was somewhere around ninety eight or so. I just kind of realized just yesterday I was talking to somebody about it and it was around 1998 that it became the moist toilet museum rather mm. than just the collection and uh I I I started collecting moist toilets and I work in a planetarium and I which work is lousy at... with toilets right <laughs> yeah. exactly yeah so it's an obvious fit but mm -hmm. I a lot of my colleagues that in other planetariums knew that I collected moist towelettes and would often, you know, share them with me and give them to me. And uh, I was hosting a, a little planetarium conference and we had an exhibit that was in the lobby of the planetarium I worked at. This was down in a place in Texas. And it, the, the, the display case had a Mars exhibit in it. And I wanted to get a kind of laugh from my, colleagues so i took the mars exhibit out put the moist towelettes in there and put the little sign on there that said moist towelette museum uh there's the sign mm -hmm. perfect <laughs> and, and then and then um and then you know they came and they laughed and they thought it was funny and they gave me more moist towelettes and things but then being lazy i didn't put the mars exhibit back into the display for a while visitors to the museum and the planetarium were spending a lot more time at the moist towelette collection than they ever did at the little Mars exhibit that we had. <laughs> and so I thought, Makes sense. Oh, I'm on to something here. So, so uh, then I moved to Michigan and started working at this planetarium and, and set it up in my office. And um, it's just kind of grown since then people donate them to me and uh, people that I know send them in, but also a lot of times just anonymous people that heard about the moist towelette museum will send them to me. So were, was everybody hitting you up for trying to steal them or trying to distract you to take them when COVID first hit and there was a shortage of towelettes? Was there some uh, sort of, look over here, a squirrel? And then they yeah, were, yeah, like, all the wash and dries from 78? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think, um, well, I, I did on my on my sign here that says Moist Towelette Museum, which um, was, it, it's, you know, the way that arrow is pointing, it, yes. it's pointing this way when it's turned like that. No, but I haven't forbid have someone gets lost. <laughs> right, right. right. I had to put a sign on here that said, you know, uh, closed 
for yes. because of the pandemic. Of course, yes. <laughs> and so it was closed. I, and that that sign, I'm sure, is probably in this. You can't see it, but there's a mess around my office here, and it's probably still sitting on the floor somewhere. Love it. This is so I feel that I personally feel that the moist toilet is one of the greatest inventions of all time. Uh, yeah, I would I would tend to agree with that. Sure. Yes, because I'm very I like things to be clean. <laughs> it serves many purposes. And, and that, just, that lemony fresh scent. Is yes. Just, you know, so nice. And it allows yeah. you to eat ribs in public. Yeah. Yeah. allows you to wipe down airplane surfaces it's everything so it, it is more than worthy of a museum in my mind yeah. and well, totally trumps i mean mars is amazing and all that but this in my mind right well how many towelettes does one need to go from like i collect moist towelettes to this is a museum this is something the public will enjoy well, I, I don't really have an exact count on them, but there's there's quite a few and there's even, you know, well, let's see, I'll move the camera here. There's Rabiju. I have oh, can I get the camera around there? I have like bins full of them. Oh wow. Some oh, of the yes. extra ones uh that are around and uh but but I haven't really um counted them, but just estimating I would say there's gotta be, you know several thousand of them probably yeah wow and uh and and they're from from all over it's really kind of amazing um you know where they all come from and i, I wish i would have traveled as much as these moist towelettes have right <laughs> that's you know everyone says that <laughs> right and is the there... thing oh, go ahead well i was going to say the thing that's interesting is there are some that are clearly like a medical usage uh hospital or just sort of sanitary things and then you have a whole bunch that make zero sense as to why they have them there. I guess Hard Rock Cafe Beijing, I get. Oh, um, Again, the, ribs. Right, sure. The Star Trek themed ones are a little, shall we say, out there? Yeah, yeah. There's, <laughs> and there, there's Leonard Nimoy. See, that's yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah. The, so, oh, that's, I mean, one. that's just moist. Where is it? It's uh, up here somewhere. Yeah, so I've got these three Star Trek ones. I, oh, look at Kirk. Ooh, oh, that is like a smolder if ever there was one. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, yeah and um, the, actually, the story of these is kind of interesting. The When I first set up the the online, the website, the online, or the Moist Towelette Online Museum, uh, yes. .com, uh, <laughs> somebody sent me a picture of these, and so I put them on the website, but I put a disclaimer that said, I don't actually have these. These are just a photograph that somebody sent me. And um, it was maybe, well, sometime this year, uh, somebody came to see the Moist Towelette Museum and they specifically wanted to see these. And I said, oh, I don't really have those. They're just online. So I thought, well, I better find some. So I went on to eBay and I bought them and I paid like 30 bucks for these three. So. Oh, but they're so worth it. Oh, they are. Yeah, I should have bought them a long time ago, I'm sure. But they even sent me the the box that they came oh, in. But that's I mean, amazing. It's an empty box. Oh, wait. Oh, okay. What's oh, that? Oh, there's, there's, there's there's an empty container there. So there's oh, I have another one there. That's yeah. still. I know. That's yeah, amazing. I, that that that's pretty cool. But um, but yeah, they they have all kind of different uses. Of course, there's the ones for food. You were mentioning the medical ones. Like mm -hmm. I have some that are you know that I have online, like the the mammo wipe for mm -hmm. uh, apparently. That's for, you, yeah, that's for yeah. mammograms, right? Right. When yeah. you get a mammogram, apparently there is um, aluminum in deodorant that affects the mammogram, and so this okay. specifically is there for getting that cleaned up. Yeah, for for First, good. Now we've got my favorite polydent wipe. Ooh, and, yeah, uh, and it's it tells you that they can be used with your dentures in or out of your mouth. Well, there you go. <laughs> oh, interesting. Uh, then you know a lot of other ones here that you know fluke bio was it biomedical <laughs> deodorant. <laughs> Amazing. radiation management services i don't know oh that's going to keep you that's perfect yeah yeah and then then we do have um and i have them somewhat organized so i have some of the medical wipes up here i have some of the travel wipes over here 
some of the more technical kind of wipes here. Like here's the uh, the radical wash for wiping away radioactive contaminants. Oh, always would, necessary. Yeah, hopefully yeah, something I mean, that small will do it. Yeah, and I don't know. I feel like it should be bigger. <laughs> you can you only know, get exposed to a very small. Just a little amount bit of radiation. Yeah, yeah just, just a, a little. Smidge, tiny little bit. Yeah, and uh, you know, I mean, I'm hoping this is not a used one. I don't think it is. Oh, that I would yeah. Put point. my Geiger counter on it. <laughs> uh, a really strange one here that someone sent me that is somewhat of a mystery to me. It <gasps> says ghost wipe, and I'll read it here for you. Ghost wipe, the wipe that dissolves during digestion. And then it so says, true. use for testing lead in dust. What? What? Okay, that's a lot of things <laughs> happening simultaneously. Yes, yeah. yeah, so, and I, I can't get this to focus. No, it's so, right. Oh, it's, we're, we got it. It's focused, we got trust it. yeah. Oh, it comes yeah. at a 500 or 1,000 pack. Yeah, and then there is a website listed on here, but I've purposely not gone to the website because I just want the mystery to be a mystery. Yes, yeah. I agree. Sometimes you must keep the mystery alive. Yes, yes. How often are you getting stuff in, in the mail or donations or emails where you just kind of go, oh, wow. I, it seems like in some ways th this museum, um, it attracted you, not vice versa. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, like I started collecting them and then, you know, people started sending them to me and you know, that's really how I get most of them nowadays is just from people finding unique ones and, and donating them to me and sending them in. And uh, yeah, they, <laughs> you know, sometimes I'll, you know, kind of think, ah, I'm kind of done with the moist towel at museum, but then more of them show up. It's like, all right. <laughs> yes, no, as soon as you're out, they pull you back in. Yeah. 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 And, and uh, Jeff, our mailman for the planetarium here, he uh, will often come by with a package you know that the, the, maybe once a month or something we get uh an envelope that comes in and he's like really excited says, hey you got another moist towelette you know because it'll say moist towelette museum you know on the, on the envelope. Like, like, you said once a month you get donations I, I would estimate probably about once a month maybe wow that's and so insane. how often do you open the mail and get one that's really mind-blowing i'm assuming you must get duplicates <laughs> oh yeah yeah yeah, but um, I'm trying to think here, like, uh, yeah, like, um, like sometimes I keep them, you know, still in the. Oh yeah. You know, in the end. It's like the. You can see a bunch of them, so the visitors can actually kind of go through the through them and read the letters that people sent that 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 they included with it, like um, but yeah, how often are they duplicates um? Not often. I mean, there's so many moist towelettes out there. That's really kind of crazy. This here's somebody put it in an old cigar tin, I guess. And uh, it's let's see, what is this one? I it's all. I don't know if you can this see. This is like Christmas. No, this is like wonderful. Mean, yeah, yeah. Right? yeah it's a nice little piece of um, tissue paper to pack it gently. Yeah, and it's like Christmas morning here with you. Okay. Inside, it's a um, some language that I'm not really quite sure what I think that's is. amazing. That feels Beautiful. like the like I don't know. And then the letter. Let me look at the letter here. Uh, and you know, we've got this nice letter from the donator. That, uh, uh, Very wow. formal. Says, yeah. It says. Hello, Mr. French. After some discussion here, we have decided that we would be thrilled to donate the enclosed item to your worthy institution. The towelette was obtained this past November on a rail journey from Samarkand to Tashkent, Uzbekistan. Oh. According to the Google Translate, the package reads, Uzbekistan Railway Scented Hygienic Napkin. We hope that this item is worthy of an addition to your fascinating collection, and it is our hope to be able to visit the museum in person in the not too distant future. Thank you and best wishes. So wow. So that's do, amazing. I love it. Do you it. have any other Uzbeki wet towelettes? I, as far as I know, uh that is the first Uzbekistan moist towelette that I've, I've ever Uzbekistan read. does it right with the cigar box and the oh, well yeah. well no I think the cigar box was the the the, dome. the mailer well still yeah the mailer yeah he's still just giving them credit for, for protection. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, but uh, yeah, like here's here's one. Uh, 
you know, with some Gojo hand wipes in it and a nice, you know, cardboard pack. Oh, there's a whole bunch of stuff in there. Some of these I haven't looked at for a while. Uh, I love it. Um, Is there a particular value you put heavier on age versus how far they traveled or is there a particular sort of categorizing of them or do they all i mean i think they all have value but is there something that's like the mona lisa yeah. they're children heidi you love I know them equally. that's exactly it that's how oh, i right <laughs> yeah i mean they're all they're all pretty good but yeah it's uh um and even just even just the plain ones where was it he was what was a plain one here that just said it just says moist. moist. That's, moist. that's amazing. That's, a, that's, a, that's all you need, right? That's, there. that's all you that, need. You know. I but, love it. But but yeah, of course, you know, the, the ones from more distant, obscure places are, are you know, very fascinating. I mean, they're all so fascinating. But, um, you know, the like, here's one that somebody gave me recently that is a little tin can, plastic tin can, and you open up the can and inside there's a packet of Wow. That's fun. Yeah. Now, your yes. definition of uh, moist towelettes, <clears throat> obviously, there's the, the Clorox wipe type towelettes that, like we were talking about, people used a ton during the pandemic and probably should be using more of now. Um, <laughs> do you like the ones that are come in a, a bigger bulk or do you like a one individually wrapped for your sanitation and your comfort? Yeah, uh, mostly I prefer the individually wrapped towel sure wipe. you're a purist like, i get it like yeah like like you know the like the cans of baby wipes that you kind of pull them up out of the top mm -hmm. you know i don't collect those you know yeah no come on I'm you're sure not somebody weird. else probably no. yeah no yeah gotcha. there probably is someone with diaper wipes some right, weirdo right. But, yeah <laughs> the diaper wipe <laughs> museum my, my preference is that but i do have in the collection some things like you know the the classic wet I mean, mm -hmm. pull up resealable thing. So there's a dozen or yes. six things, 15 thick cloths in there. Oh, these feel pretty dry inside. That's been there for a long time. Well, I was wondering about that too. What, and I, I, I hate to even bring up the suggestion, but do you have, I see, obviously they're in metal. Do you have a plan for some sort of security for fire or vandalism? Uh, or are you just hoping that these will all just suck the moisture out of everything and dry it all off. Yeah, I think if 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 there was a fire here in the planetarium, there would be things that were um, probably more important than my moist towelette collection. Uh, agree to disagree, John. <laughs> but <laughs> what's a the... terrible discussion? Oh, please, you know what I talked to Santa. About. I know. What does uh, what does the other planetarium employees make of this collection? Are they just like this is John's weird hobby and yeah, well, um, thank God it's not toenails or yeah, <laughs> right. I keep the toenail collection at home. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's private. That's personal. Yeah. yeah, we just look. Here's another very old looking one that says after pump. So it's for oh yeah, okay package, but it's for cleaning up after yeah you, um, yeah pump gasoline. Uh, yeah, oh, so I totally didn't even realize that. I was back on yeah. the boobs. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, you know, uh, I always assumed it was gas station, but no, I think you're it, right. It does, oh, it says self serve gas. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not, not um, the other kind of pump. Yes. <laughs> sure. uh, but the, yeah, my my other colleagues, I, there's there's uh, really just three people that work here at the Abrams Planetarium uh full-time and then we have some students that you know work here as well but the full-time people the my my other colleague he has a big collection of pez and oh. uh if you were visiting here i would open that door right there and point you into his office and you could see his pez collection but unfortunately this camera doesn't we're here for you it yeah. doesn't have a long enough cable. I can't reach it all the way over there. But I will come visit you in person. And as I'm sitting here talking, I don't know why I wasn't there in person today because I'm yeah. just an hour away. So oh, please, yeah, please, please stop by. Yeah. And, and, uh, and then my other colleague, the boss, she collects garden gnomes. Oh, and, uh, that she can... has a collection of those. Although she says, I mean, most of those she says are at home. And then she also has a small collection of um, Donatello. Uh, oh. Figurine, the ninja turtles teenage ninja turtles that's pretty sweet okay. so, you know she has a big collection of those so so everybody here collects something and you know that's why on the guest registry i always ask people 
um, you know, what do you collect? And it's just fascinating because I think so many people collect things, mm-hmm. and, you know, they they just are always proud of their collections. And uh, so people don't think I'm too weird for collecting these here. <laughs> well, maybe they do, but um, but they also collect their own stuff. Most Right. Of. They can't throw so, stones at the collection. Yeah. There's someone collecting ukuleles. I also play a ukulele. Uh, egg cups somebody collects. Oh, yeah, good that's... vibes. That's a good thing to collect. Oh. Um, uh, turtles, guitar picks. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Vinyl records, coffee mugs, ancient Greek coins. So, you know, people wow. just collect all kind of amazing things. And, uh, um, well, and people always talk about conversation pieces and things like that. It's got to be a great way to start up a conversation with somebody about something that is on the surface ridiculous but like you said you start talking to a person you really get a sense of their personality with the things they value and and want to have around them yeah 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 you know, I, nothing I against so. your boss but i don't want to be trapped in her room overnight her office overnight oh, right no well well most of her garden gnomes are at her house so just avoid okay her house. okay well that's that's if you have a yeah. fear of garden gnomes right um, just the ones that come to life and, you know, terrorized the most Chalette Museum late at night. But otherwise, yeah. oh, they're fine. They're perfectly fine. Yeah, they're, you, yeah, yeah, they're, they're, they're pretty good. Do you have a gift shop? Uh, well, I used to have more of these that I would give out to visitors, but I have oh, wow. run out of stock of Moist Towelette Museum Moist Towelettes. Oh, wow. that's own, amazing. Yeah, I have my own moist towelettes that, that I've purchased that uh, I would give away to people, but I've only got a few of these left. I need to probably reorder these. I bought these probably five years ago or so. That's when you know you've made it as a museum. <laughs> right? I, right. I, I did okay. some looking. I couldn't see anything. Are you on Yelp or TripAdvisor uh, or any other review site where folks can... Well, I have not put myself out there other than the original online Moist Towelette Museum that I created back in the 90s, and I haven't really updated. It still has all the, you know, 90s style, you know, animated GIFs or GIFs, whatever you want to call them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't really have too many of those on there. But anyway, um, one interesting story. One time, so I on the website, I did have my address on there where you could donate a moist towelette and um and it was my home address and so one day i was just kind of you know playing around on google looking on my phone on the google maps and i zoomed over my house to get the aerial shot of my house and it popped up on there it said moist towelette museum oh. right there on google i didn't put it in there it just automatically did it and i thought well i don't want people popping into my house no go to the actual museum so so I changed the address on there on the website and then over time then it stopped s- saying that my house was the Moist Towelette Museum but then I zoomed in on the Abrams Planetarium and before it said Abrams Planetarium it said <laughs> Moist Towelette Museum. Yes, that's amazing. <laughs> amazing. So, so I uh I think they have updated that since then. I haven't looked recently. Probably. Um yeah, but one know. leads to the other, so you win either way. I mean, yes, exactly. The and, destination, uh, both times. Well, and according to Atlas Obscura, which seems to be the one place that does have you listed on their website, <clears throat> um, I, I think they made a mistake. They say all but one of your towelettes are opened. I think it's uh, one of them is open. The rest are closed. Oh, right. Your, well, your celebrity. Yeah, yes. Towelette. Right. There is the. Um... The one that I have that is used, that's probably what they're really trying to say. I right. have a used towelette that was used by Tom and Ray Maliazzi of Car Talk fame. Mm-hmm. Um, it was NPR radio show called Car Talk. And uh, they sent me uh, two moist towelettes, one that's you know still in the package and one that they took out of the package and used. And uh, and then they used that towelette. So, so that is the, uh, the one that is... A used one, then the little card that they sent does say, you know, here you go, John, you go, John. by Tom and Ray. That's amazing. Tom, then Ray. 
signed Dougie Mayer, which was there. That's awesome. Well, you need to know the order of which one of them. Yes. Which brother used it first? Right, Tom, yes. Then right. Slack, yeah. Sure. Yeah, poor Ray. He had to use a dirty towelette. I, guess. I know that's the worst. <laughs> the indignity. Yeah. Do you have any other celebrities, or there's anyone else you're trying to get? Are you uh, tracking down Terry Gross, or? <laughs> yeah, that'd be a good one. Uh, yeah, I, uh, other there's... NPR uh, <laughs> luminaries. Yeah, yes. those, those are the only. That's the only celebrity one I have, and and like I said, I wasn't. Uh, I I think that was back in the '90s, probably when I got that one, and I sent them an email or something, and they they responded with that. Uh, but I haven't really been, you know, actively pursuing any other uh, famous celebrities. But if any famous celebrities are listening to this podcast and would like to send in some used towelettes or new towelettes right well if kathy lee is listening we will let her know <laughs> to to hit you up certainly this could happen we have we have celebrities who listen we, we've got some connections yeah so do you have a plan for the museum going forward is there a do you have a new wing an expansion coming in where where does this go from here well um for the <laughs> For the foreseeable future, it's just going to kind of stay like this, and it will keep growing as uh, more moist towelettes come in. But I haven't decided that I need to kind of expand it. Although I did, <laughs> my boss was mentioning that uh, you know maybe at some point we can put it out in the lobby of the planetarium because we had a display case that was empty that we were looking for something to go in there. So at some point it might be you know a temporary exhibit out in the main lobby of the planetarium but we don't have any exact plans we uh this year uh the abrams planetarium or i guess in 2024 abrams planetarium will be celebrating its 60th anniversary and Ooh. so we have an exhibit that we're putting together right now about the history of the planetarium so maybe when that's done i'll put my moist pellets out there or maybe i can put this as part of the history yes yeah, it's it is. Been, it's I, part of the fabric of the planetarium. Yeah, I mean, it's been here for 20 years. And so 20 out of those 60 years, it's been part of the planetarium. Yes, it should have its own section. I mean, yeah. Do like the map of the timeline. <laughs> yes, yes. We'll, yes. Uh, we'll work on that. We'll work on that. Creation of the it. universe. Uh, and and ac actually. Creation of the moist towelette. I just, those I just, are yeah. important things. I just thought of this too. Um uh, the, this is a wash-up towelette, which is the oldest one that I know because it's documented on the back. It does say oh. 1963. So this is actually, you know, was made the year that the planetarium was built. Wow. That's amazing. Okay, at the very least, that one needs a little yeah. spot at, yeah. the, at the anniversary party. Next time you find yourself in East Lansing, Michigan, make sure to check out the Moist Towelette Museum, or you can find them online, moisttowelettemuseum.com. Why the Podcast is produced by the Professional Production Company. Please be sure to rate and review us on Apple Podcasts because we're shallow and need constant validation. For more information, you can check out our website, whythepodcast.com. And like everyone else, we're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Today's show was recorded and produced by Heidi Hegquist and myself from our world headquarters located on the second floor of the professional office building, centrally located downtown. Our reluctant executive producers are John Sauvé and Sandy Stone. Our willing producers are Rachel Allen and Randy Jeanette. Our intern is Zach Jackson. This one's for Philippe. Thanks for joining us. Flash, we're coming home. Nigel, is that you? Are you here, Nigel?